That's hip extension. That's hip flexion. If you're having problems with chronic back pain, hip, knee, or foot pain that have not been relieved by traditional physical therapy or stretching and strengthening exercises, your problem may be basic movement patterns and the series of exercises I'm gonna to do today are gonna to help you target that in a way that I think anybody can do and understand. Hey everybody, after at least several hundred videos I've done so far, trying to help people improve their walking technique and their posture and their overall movement patterns, I can say without a doubt that the series of exercises I'm going to review in this video are gonna be more helpful than anything I've done to date. I should have done this a long time ago. Now actually I have done some of these exercises in the past, but not in the same context. And frankly, at the time I did some of those videos, nobody was watching the channel. So they may be lingering away in the old YouTube broom closet where nobody's gonna see them. So I'm gonna bring back some of these exercises that I have done in the past, but also give a new flavor to them and a different context that you're gonna be able to use for your walking technique, posture, and movement patterns. And after you watch the video, I do want you to drop me a comment and let me know if I was right that these are the exercises that are gonna be the linchpin to improving your movement patterns. Let's go ahead and get started. In this video, I'm going to use some basic kickboxing exercises which are directly linked to patterns of core movement you use in your daily life. The purpose of these exercises is not to learn how to kickbox, but rather to develop a deeper understanding and feeling of how to use your core to create proper posture, walking technique, and fluid movement. So let's get into exercise number one. We're going to shuffle forward and we're going to shuffle back. I'm gonna show you the exercise and then I'm going to explain where we're using this in our basic walking technique. So what we're gonna do is take a bow stance, one leg facing forward, the rear leg with the foot angled out at about 45 degrees, and we're gonna bring the arms up. The arm by the rear leg is gonna be up with a fist by the face, and the arm from the forward leg is going to be in front of that. The fists should be just about in front of each other. And we're gonna sit back with vertical posture. From the side view, it should look something like this. So this is gonna be our basic stance that we're gonna start with, and I'm gonna shuffle forward, and I'm gonna shuffle back, and then I'm going to explain what's going on with this movement. So from this position, we're gonna do two motions. First motion is shuffle forward, and the second motion is shuffle back. From the side view, shuffle forward, shuffle back. When I shuffle forward, the front knee and the rear knee are both going to extend. It's going to end up placing my foot on the heel and I'm going to shift the weight to the flat of the foot and then replace the rear leg and just sit back down. I'll do that a little bit slower. We're gonna shuffle, place the heel, place the flat of the foot, and then place the ball and then the heel sink back. So that is the shuffle forward. Then we're going to shuffle back. One movement is gonna trigger the shuffle back, and then we're gonna place the ball of the foot, the heel, and then place the front foot down. Shuffle back, shuffle back. And then we're gonna shuffle forward. So this movement is absolutely critical for normal walking technique. The shuffle forward is using the technique from the core. This involves your upper and lower waist muscles and your hip muscles, as well as your knees and your ankles. The motion that we do when we're walking, where we swing through, is the same movement from the shuffle forward, which is why you'll notice when we swing through, you're gonna get the same actions. That's why when we're walking normally, not only is the standing leg knee going to extend and ankle dorsiflex, but the swing leg knee is going to extend and the ankle is going to dorsiflex. 
before we place the heel on the ground. So watch again and you can see the actions happening. I don't need to lift the forward leg up off the ground. It is a reflexive action of the forward knee and ankle that's going to be triggered by the movement of the core that I'm doing. And that movement is all coming from the side of the rear leg in this case. So my right side hip is going to pull forward. I talk about this quite a bit, pulling versus pushing. So this is a pull from the front, hip flexors pulling forward as I tuck using the lower abs on the right and I shift forward or rotate forward from the upper abs on the right. Lower abs and upper abs on the right, flexion of the right hip. That's what triggers this motion. In the walking code, I call this technique lift. It lifts us up or lifts us forward. From this position, we're going to shuffle forward. Now I'm going to demonstrate the second exercise because I want you to be able to do them one after the other so you can feel and see the difference between hip extension and hip flexion. So we are doing hip flexion to shuffle forward. It looks like the leg is extending behind the body and in fact the leg is extending behind the body but that doesn't mean I am using my glutes or my hip extensors to create that motion. If I use the same motion from the waist muscles and I use hip extension, if I extend from the glutes, that is what's going to happen. It's going to cause the cross or this punch from the rear hand. That is what happens when I use my core on the right, waist muscles, and hip extension. That's hip extension. That's hip flexion. One more time. Hip extension, hip flexion. When I flex the hip, it does not project the arm outward. It just causes my body to shift forward. When I extend from the glutes, the glutes combined with this waist rotation automatically projects the arm outward in a punch. So when you activate the core correctly, if you keep your arms completely relaxed, that is what should happen. And if you do the lift technique properly from the front of the hip, and if you do it in a relaxed fashion, that is what will happen. So if you do those movements, you should very clearly feel the difference between a push and a lift, a hip extension and a hip flexion. Let me explain just a little bit more from this position, what you can do is take your hip and flex the hip, but at the same time, deactivate your lower abs. So your lower abs are tucking your pelvis under here. What I'm going to do is deactivate the lower abs, so now they're not tucking the pelvis under, and I'm going to flex the hip. So that's the motion we should be doing here is flexing the hip. This is probably more visible to you as hip flexion. So after I've done the hip flexion, if I replace the lower ab action by tucking, that's what happens. It causes the body to move forward. The hip flexion is a forward motion of the hip joint, which occurs at the same time as the tucking of the pelvis from the lower abs, and that results in a forward movement of the body, which is that shuffle. Now I'm going to focus on the shuffle back, where we go backwards. This is a similar motion to the shuffle forward, except we are going to be turning the upper waist towards the lower abs and the hip flexion. So when I shift forward, I'm flexing the rear leg hip and turning the upper waist forward on the right and lower abs active on the right. When I shuffle back, I'm going to flex the forward leg hip, so my left hip, and instead of turning forward on the side of the left hip like I did in the lift, I'm going to turn forward on the side of the rear leg. So in a sense, I'm turning toward that forward leg as it flexes. That causes the body to begin to move backwards. In the walking code, this movement is called retreat. 
turning the upper waist towards a flexing hip and a activated lower abs on that same side. Everything turning towards the left hip as I flex the left hip. It causes a backward movement that I call retreat. And so from this position, when we do that, it causes the body to go backward. The retreat is maybe even a little bit easier to feel because everything is turning into the same direction. That's the motion. It causes the knee to extend, just like lift caused the knee to extend, but it causes the ankle to plantar flex or go down. So that's what happens when we use this core action of retreat. The ankle on the side I'm turning towards is going to plantar flex versus when I did lift, the ankle is going to dorsiflex. So if I were to use retreat walking, it would cause me to walk backwards as opposed to using lift walking causes me to lift forward. So there are two complementary movements. If you happen to do any couples dancing where a man and a woman, a lead and a follower are dancing together and moving forward and backward in unison, we're using that movement. The leader will be using lift to move forward and the follower will be turned around and doing retreat going backwards. And so they completely synchronize their motions of the core and the motions of the core move the legs and the feet automatically. That's how come good dancers can be in complete synchronicity with each other because they're following each other's core. Now we're gonna take that movement and we're going to do a few different exercises from the same position and use it to transition us to a walking pattern. So the shuffle forward and the shuffle back, lift and then retreat. Now what I want you to do is we're going to do a lift starting from this position, but not using the rear leg. So when I shuffled forward, I was using the core on the right. Now I'm gonna lift same core movement, but I'm gonna do it on the left side. So I'm gonna flex the left hip, tuck the left lower abs, and turn forward on the left. That is going to lift my body up on the left leg. Instead of lifting it forward from the rear leg, using the right side of the core, I'm going to lift myself up from the forward leg using the left side of the core. So get in your stable standing position and without pushing with the rear leg, using your core on the left side, pull yourself up. It should bring your swing leg foot almost closed, and then you'll have to close your body by turning the upper waist in the other direction to bring your feet together and then shift weight. But all of the lifting action should be done from the core on the side that you're about to lift up towards. So I'm not pushing off the rear leg. All of the core is active on the side that is lifting the body up. Now what we're gonna do is do a walking forward lift from the left leg, but we're gonna transition one movement at a time. So from this position, what we're gonna do, instead of lifting forward, I'm going to retreat forward. So when I use retreat, it can, in certain circumstances, cause the body to move forward because what's gonna happen as I flex my rear hip, turn the lower abs, backward on the right, and I turn instead of forward on the right, I turn forward on the left. And so this is gonna be another version of retreat. It's still gonna cause my knee to extend, ankle to plantar flex this time, but it's gonna cause the body to do this sort of action. So instead of my waist muscle going this way, it's going this way. So that's the first motion you're gonna do from this position. We're going to do retreat.
everything turning towards the right hip. The right hip is flexing. So flex the right hip, tuck the right lower abs, turn the left lower or le turn the left upper waist. So that's the first motion. That is actually when we're walking the motion we use to place the heel. Now we're going to do the next motion, which is what lowers the forefoot when we're walking, and that is tucking. Tucking on the side of the leg that just hit the ground. I'm gonna remove the tuck from the right, and I'm gonna tuck on the left. And that's gonna bring me up to this position. This is gonna be the position when we're walking right before the swing through. And then now we're gonna use the front of the hip muscle to activate the step forward. Now again, this is a pull from the front, not a push from the back. It's gonna be very easy for you to feel the difference between the pull and the push from this position because if you try to push, meaning push your knee back using your glutes, that's what's gonna happen. So we're gonna get back to this position. So now I'm gonna activate the muscles in the front of my hip nice and slowly so I can feel it happening and I'm going to lift the body forward. Facing the camera, everything turns towards the rear hip. That's retreat. Now I'm gonna tuck the waist on the left using the lower abs. And then now I have only left to use the hip flexors to pull the body forward. That pulls me into the swing through phase of the step and it will align your spine in the direction your foot is facing. So if you're a duck foot walker and you do that motion, it's gonna pull your spine in line with the foot. So then when you place the next foot, it's gonna be straight and you'll be able to keep the core, the hips, the knees, and the ankles completely aligned. What I also showed is a different movement using the same waist muscles, but instead of using the front flexors of the hip, I use the rear extensors of the hip, and that creates a little bit of a punch. The punch is gonna go straight out. The fist is gonna rotate from facing the opposite side, so my right fist palm is facing the left side of me. When we do the punch, it's gonna automatically rotate the shoulder so the fist is going to be face down. And the knee is going to rotate inwards and the ankle is gonna plantar flex, bringing the heel up. So that is the motion. That is created strictly by the core. If you use your hip lower abs and waist correctly, the arm is going to do that motion automatically. Do not try and reach out with the arm. Let the arm be propelled by the core movement because that's how you're going to tell if you're doing the core correctly. Now what we're going to do is a different movement of the arms, which in kickboxing is called a jab. And so the left arm in this case is gonna go out and punch and the palm or the front part of the fist is going to also rotate downwards as I do that motion. The difference between the cross and the jab is in the core. So when I do the cross, I'm rotating forward on the right and I'm tucking my left lower abs. When I do the jab, I'm extending the same hip, but I'm gonna use the core waist muscles on the left. So I'm gonna turn forward and around on the left, and I'm going to tuck my left lower abs instead of the right lower abs. That motion, upper waist on the left, lower abs on the left, and right hip extension is gonna produce this jab motion. Just like the cross, the arm should be projected automatically. If you do the motion correctly, you don't have to move your arm on its own. And so practice that. 
And just do this slowly, because we're not trying to practice punching a bag. We're just trying to practice getting the movement to happen. So you don't have to do this fast. From here, you can check your position. Check that you're extending your glutes, pushing off the floor that way. Check that you're tucking the lower abs on the left, not on the right. If you tuck the abs on the lower right at the same time, you're going to pitch over like this. So we're extending from the right glutes, left lower abs, left upper waist is turning forward and around, and that is going to project the arm out like that. Now we're going to do a movement like this, transitioning from the jab into the cross or the one-two punch. That is going to be taking the core and switching sides after you've done the first punch. And so in order to do this, you're not going to do anything different with the hip. We're just going to be changing the core rotation or what I call the torsional rotation of the core from one side to the other. Torsional rotation meaning that the upper waist is turning in the opposite direction from the lower waist like a towel twisting like this. So this is torsion on the left, creating the jab, and then we're going to switch to torsion on the right by turning the upper waist from right to left while I at the same time turn the lower waist from left to right. And it's going to change the jab to a cross. We don't have to do anything different with the hip muscles. The hip stays in extension, and I just change the waist. And that is going to produce the next motion. So practice that transition, the jab into the cross, and that's going to help you feel the waist movement. Now, since we're not tightening the muscles, we're just moving the muscles, you're not going to feel contraction in your waist. You just have to let the movement happen. So having the arms go where they're trying to go in the correct manner shows you if you're using your core correctly. You're not going to feel anything happening in the waist, so you can rely on your arm movement to tell you if you've done it in the right manner. Now, what I wanted you to learn with this action or this exercise, not only is the transition from the torsional motion on the left to the torsional motion on the right, I also want you to get a feeling of that action. This one right here. The core technique from the walking code for this movement is called reach. Extending the hip and then we have torsional rotation on the opposite side from the extending hip. This action is used all the time when we are walking uphill and also when we are walking upstairs. So it's a great core pattern for you to get familiar with. I'm going to demonstrate uh, for the moment on flat ground here, but I'm going to throw in a clip of me doing this walking uphill. This is a great pattern to strengthen your core body connection in doing proper movements. So we're going to do the reach. I call it reach because it often leads to the hand reaching forward. It's also used when we do this sort of motion, so it's a reaching down with the leg. Same core movement. But we're going to do the reach, and then now we're going to lift from the reach position. So I'm going to lift from my left side from this position. I know I have my waist in the right position and now all I have to do is flex my hip to pull the body up again into standing posture. You'll already have your waist core properly aligned and so now all you have to do is pull from your hip. And again, it's going to show you that when we walk, that lifting action, whether you're lifting up or lifting forward, does not rely on any momentum or muscle action coming from the rear leg. Because I'm going to be in a static position, there's no momentum coming from the rear leg, and I'm just going to lift myself up using the core. 
Now, after we lift up, what I want you to do is push yourself forward. This is a great way to feel the difference again between the front of the hip and the back of the hip. Because from this position, we're going to lift ourselves forward using the front of the hip and you're going to get yourself up to the standing position. From the standing position, now you're going to push yourself forward using the rear muscle, the glutes, pushing forward. So we're going to use the front of the hip to lift. You're going to get to a fully activated hip flexion, which is going to bring you up to the standing position. I am fully flexed now. I can't get myself any further forward by flexing the hip. Now to move forward, I have to extend the hip. This is what we do when we are walking uphill. Now I'm gonna do the same exercise, but moving up a slope so you can see the three elements of the movement tied together. First is going to be the reach, then the pull or the lift, followed by the push. So the lifting action has to be done from the hip flexors in the front. That's gonna pull you up. If you do this on a slope, it's really gonna help you feel the activation of the hip muscles. As I hold this position on the slope, the flexing hip muscle is keeping me in position. If I wanna move forward, I can't continue to flex or pull from the hip. I now need to push from the glutes. And so that's how the movement is tied together. Hey everybody, I'm back for part three of our exercise practice using kickboxing techniques to improve our overall movement, fluidity, our walking technique, and our posture. So I'm not gonna go back over what we've done in the previous videos, but today what I'm gonna show you is a sequence of pivots that we are going to use to help learn how we coordinate our core muscles and then a couple other exercises to tie this all together. So the first pivot I'm gonna do, let me face this way, is I'm gonna turn into my forward leg, pivoting 90 degrees. So I'm gonna turn from my forward direction or my north direction to a west facing direction. That's what this is gonna look like. A slight shift forward, pulling back with the rear leg, turning it, and then shifting or settling back into a forward-facing position. But each time we do the movement, we're going to pivot 90 degrees. So the first thing that's going to happen is a shift of weight to the forward leg, removing the weight from the rear leg. This is gonna use our upper waist and our lower waist, changing them from right side motion, which is rooting my right leg, changing them to the left side, rooting my left leg. And I'm gonna flex my right hip as I do that to shift the weight. So this gets all of the weight off of the rear leg and then allows me to pivot. Once I get the weight on the forward leg, now I'm going to extend my rear hip, my right hip, and I'm gonna turn the upper waist forward or around from the right side. So I'm gonna extend the right hip and turn the upper waist. And then I'm just gonna sink back. So shift the weight onto your forward leg and then reach back with your rear leg. It so happens that this core technique in the walking code is called reach back. We're gonna reach back with the leg as the upper and lower waist turn away from the extending hip. So extending the right hip, upper and lower waist turning to the left. That is reach back. And then we're gonna settle the weight. 
So practice that and feel if you can coordinate that movement. I've shown reach back before doing an exercise where we were placing the foot forward using reach and placing the foot backward using reach back. So that's a little exercise sequence I've done before, but in the kickboxing stance, we're gonna do this motion, which uses the same core movement. So see if you can do that fluidly. Now what we're gonna do is pivot in the opposite direction. This is a little bit harder movement. I would probably try this with socks on so you don't have a very sticky shoe on a sticky floor, because this is gonna require some pivoting. I would recommend this if you're younger, more spry, and have plenty of mobility. You can try this one. If you were a little bit more movement challenged, you might wanna not try this pivoting technique because we're pivoting a leg that has more weight on it. And so that pivot looks like this. And I'm just gonna explain it briefly for those of you who want to try it. I'm using the retreat core technique to shift forward. Upper waist, lower waist, all turning towards the flexing right or rear hip. So that's the first part of the motion. It's the same motion that I use to shift forward before tucking and lifting if I wanted to go into a forward walk. But we're just going to do that part. Then from here, what I'm gonna do is extend the right hip and I'm gonna turn the upper and lower waist to the left. So this is a very counterintuitive movement. I'm using a reach back, the same motion I used when I pivoted around in the other direction, but I'm going to set up the turn to the right before I pivot turning to the left. That's gonna cause the body to twist around in that direction. I'm gonna do it in slow motion. That is the retreat motion, and then I'm gonna do the reach back. Extending the right hip and turning the upper and lower waist to the left, that causes this motion. And then I'm gonna collect and step backwards. If I begin to gradually increase the speed, it looks like that. but you have to have the setup first. I can't just try to pivot my forward foot before twisting the waist this way, then twisting the waist back that way. So that may be for those of you who are feeling more advanced in your movement. Like I said, if you are having any difficulty moving at all, I wouldn't even try that one. Now for the final exercise of this series, I'm gonna do a reaching back motion, but in a different way using the eighth core technique, one that I don't use very often because we use it in running and I don't do a lot of running videos. And we use it if we're walking uphill, but it's a very brief motion walking uphill so we don't see it very often. But this is going to be the core technique in the walking code of pulse where we extend the active hip and the upper and lower waist turn in the direction of the extending hip. So in Tai Chi, that produces a motion called ward off like this. When we're running, that's actually what propels us up and off the ground. And we also use it if we're hopping or leaping. But in this exercise, I'm gonna do it in a way that is going to reach back with the leg instead of trying to propel us forward. So in other words, I'm gonna use the technique, but using the hip of the leg that's up in the air, not the hip that's connected to the ground. So it's gonna give a different effect and it's going to look something like this. I'm gonna shift my weight onto the leg and then I'm gonna reach back with the right leg hip, but I'm gonna turn the upper and lower waist back to the right towards that hip. And that's what's gonna happen. It's gonna cause me to reach and extend the leg backwards. It's gonna be, it's gonna be propelled by the hip extension and the rotation of the lower waist and the rotation of the upper waist all going 
at the same time, in the same direction. So that is the core technique of pulse. Take the weight off of it, and then we're going to pulse backwards. It should really pull the body backwards. Everything's turning towards that rear hip as it extends. When we do that with the leg weighted, all that motion, if the foot is on the ground, is going to propel the body up and forward, and that's why that movement is used in running. When we do that motion of pulse, it creates extension of the knee and plantar flexion of the ankle automatically in conjunction with the motion of the waist and the hips. So my hip becomes a pushing action off the ground, the knee extension becomes a pushing action off the ground, and the ankle plantar flexion becomes an extension off the ground, plus the upper and lower waist turning, essentially pushing off the ground all at the same time, makes pulse a very strong motion. If I do it when my weight's on that leg, it propels me forward. So that's the final exercise I wanted to show you in this series. And it's really brought us through almost all of the movements that we do in walking. I didn't name all of the core techniques because some of them were transition movements and I didn't want to make the video too long, but you did use all eight core techniques if you went through each one of the movements that I showed in this series of lessons. So I hope you enjoyed it. Drop me a comment and let me know if you find these exercises helpful and I will see you in the next one. For those of you who are Walking Code channel members, I'm going to post this as one long video. I'm going to break it up into pieces for the YouTube non-members. Have a great day.